Well, hello and welcome to the living room of the dollhouse for another reading from The Secret Language of Birthdays by Gary Goldschneider and Eust Elfers for October 6th, the day of the good life. That's right. And here at the top of the page is a visual representation of October 6th, the day of the good life. Well, we have us. A picture of a pillow and a tambourine. I don't know if that's a direct uh, representation of the day of the good life, but maybe for somebody. Uh, but hey, that's not altogether important. What's important is it's someone's birthday today. That's right. If today's October 6th and it's your birthday, I just want to say happy birthday to you. That's right. That's what's important here. And if this video finds you late, I don't know, a couple of days, weeks, months, well, whatever that time limit might be there, Hey, I hope you had a happy birthday. That's right. But for everyone else who's joining us for the read here today, ideally to celebrate, well, I just want to say hello and welcome to you too. Hope you enjoy yourself. Now, before we dive in with the read direct, let's roll some dice. Hey, this is the Diecast, a birthday broadcast, so we need to live up to the namesake. But we do so more importantly for synchronicity's sake. That's right. We rolled us. A six and a one for a seven. That's right. Now, what is synchronicity? Some of you might be wondering. Well, it's just you getting out into the world, letting the universe show you it's with you on your path. And uh, it does it does that by when you focus on these numbers, or maybe you roll your own. Perhaps that's ideal. You take some dice with you so you can ascribe some directional values to number sets and figure out your time limits with which to walk down uh, those particular directions, looking for your numbers. But you look for your numbers, right? That's your mutually agreed upon symbol that the universe shows you that it's with you on your path you know it's uh, it's one of them things that uh, the universe is always talking to us apparently from what I've heard we just don't know what to look for how to listen and this might be the way to do that to recognize those things and that you don't realize the universe is lining things up for you and you might not really gain anything out of this outside of you know, just a little bit of reassurance that you're not alone in this world. So in any event, yeah, I don't know how to explain it better than that outside of when you get down to wherever you're going, oh, things are just going to start popping up. Maybe you get, you maybe you see the number seven bus pop up. Oh, well, get on. That's one of your numbers, right? And maybe you don't ride the bus all that often. So, hey, it's your birthday. Why not get out there? Do something to expand your horizons, right? And maybe you uh, roll your dice, find out you're going to be ro riding on for seven minutes. Or, you know, so maybe that time elapses, you come to the next stop and you get off and what do you find you're in front of a pillow shop maybe that might be the theme for the day maybe it's next door to a music store they got tambourines on clearance who's to say that might be something it does uh, but hey that's synchronicity as far as I understand it so let's dive in with your birthday read all right your month is October your day the sixth your sign is 12 to 14 degrees Libra your period is Libra 2 specifically and your quality and element is Cardinal Air. All right, October 6th, the day of the good life. Those born on October 6th generally have a desire to improve the lives of those around them, either through their precepts or their deeds. However, it is not usually, I'm sorry, however, it is usually not on a daily work level that those born on this day contribute. They are not, as they see it, public servants. It is more their enjoyment of what they do, their love of fun, and their desire that the quality of life and its standards should be improved that is the motivation for their contribution. On October 6, people like to live to the fullest. For them, life is an adventure, and mundane dullness is their enemy. And thus, they try to simplify those daily tasks tasks, which to them may be a tiresome, albeit necessary, use of energy. In this way, more time can be spent on recreation and engaging in exciting endeavors. October 6 people run the risk of becoming sensationalists and of demanding more and more thrills from experience. Women born on October 6 will give all for love. And they will not let marriage or any other social institution stand between them and their romantic ideals. And in this respect, they are amoral and can flaunt their feelings in quite a shameless, uninhibited fashion. And men born on this day are less romantic in love matters and more attracted to the romance of adventure, exploration, and physical danger. 
October 6 people are most often highly prized as friends, not because of their supportive qualities or their loyalty, but simply because they are fun to be around, and they are able to impart a lighthearted spirit to any social gathering and prefer to be right at the center of attention themselves. And they are delighted by adoration and feed off of the energy of an audience. And though October 6 people have an undeniable talent for entertaining their friends, family, and colleagues, and their bright positive orientation generally acts as a tonic on others, after some time, this effect can get stale and even depressing. And it sometimes seems as if those born on this day are acting out of some compulsion to negate the seriousness of deeper meaning of life. Less highly evolved October 6 people can get so carried away with enjoyment and a kind of Pollyanna attitude that they risk losing what they have in this world. Most October 6 people, however, are reasonably optimistic. And though they have a cheerful outlook, there is an undenying underlying rather hard side to their character that allows them to weigh the consequences of what they do and the prospects for success. And indeed, some born in this day have what amounts to a ruthless streak when it comes to getting their own way. And October 6, people like the efficiency of modern conveniences, but at the same time are traditionalists in their instincts, or their interests rather, and their tastes. And indeed, they know how to put together an elegant and enjoyable lifestyle. But they must, however, beware of growing too attached to comfort and luxury. All right, quite the interesting birthday breakdown, I would say. Uh, and here, like, I got a little bit of a uh, commentary, if you like. I put some notes together. So let's dive in with your breakdown. See what I had to say here. A general desire to improve the lives of those around you. First impression, first sentence, uh, I thought the good life uh, in the title was for you, and maybe it is, uh, but perhaps you just get fulfillment from helping others. Uh, I'll see soon enough if that's the case. All right, now write that because I go sentence by sentence, my first impressions. I don't, I don't read the whole thing and then formulate what to write. I'm just going uh, chronologically, if you like. So let's see what I have to say in my reactions, chronologically speaking. But we move on, sentence two, and dot, dot, dot. Apparently, you were not suited for the daily work level, as they write, as you see it anyhow. Or at least contributing as a public servant isn't what you're geared for. Uh, you love fun and improvements toward quality of life that endorses that end as your calling. So apparently you look to kind of min-max the time spent with mundane necessities so you can spend more time with the adventure that you see life as. And I would say that seems admirable. You know what I mean? You're figuring out how to get the best out of what you want um, by, I don't know, being pragmatic about everything else. At least that's what it would seem like. But the reading warns of such an aim growing out of control, or your taste for ever-increasing returns of these experience inevitably waning. And for women, it says, this carries over to romantic ideals and men in exploration of danger. And I, that's interesting uh, that there's a, uh, a dichotomy there, or a, different, or a change. You would think that both of them might be, or at least I would, I would think that both of them might be the same, but apparently not. Apparently. <laughs> all right, all of this apparently makes you fun to be around and curries favor with us other mere public servants, all right? Which, being stuck living uh, mundane lives, I'd argue, makes sense, all right? And it sounds like a mutually beneficial relationship to a certain extent. Uh, we get entertained and you get the attention you crave and feed upon, all right? But this can grow old for you, too, the reading claims, and to us peasants' is chagrin, I would imagine. Uh, so don't get carried away, it sounds like, all right? Measured moderation versus arguable hedonism, I guess. Lesson, you're a lesser evolved Pollyanna type. Extremely optimistic, as I had to look that one up. I'd heard it before, I'm like, ah, what is that exactly? Uh, so, uh, those who aren't, um, don't be ruthless in getting your way, I say. Those of you who aren't Pollyanna types, don't be ruthless, all right? 
Uh, I don't want to say have that harder side like they also mention, but a realist sense about your reality is appreciated by us peasants, all right? Especially when a serious conversation is had. If you're just kind of, uh, what do you call it, aloof to how you react to things and how uh, your personality is registered with the rest of us, and you don't actually like know what's going on, some people might get a little bit upset by that. That's what I was trying to say. So as long as you're a realist about your situation, I think the rest of us can kind of appreciate things when a serious conversation comes up. I think they mentioned that as well. I appreciate that. But in any event, that's been your uh, birthday breakdown. Let's move on to your numbers and your planets. That's right. Those born on the 6th of the month are ruled by the number 6 and by the planet Venus. Often romantic loves become the dominant theme in the lives of those ruled by the number 6. Doubly underlined for October 6 people by Venus's rulership and their sign. Libra, if you didn't remember. <laughs> All right. And because those ruled by the number six are magnetic in attracting both sympathy and admiration. And since Venus, the ruler of Libra, is strongly connected with social interaction, it will often be a struggle for October 6 people to both discipline themselves and insist that others allow them the privacy and the seclusion they need. All right, there's your numbers and planets. What I have to say here? The number six and the planet Venus for dual Venus rulerships. Um, love, let's see. And I would have thought a, uh, here I would have thought there'd be some overly glaring romantic sexual love facet, like hyper-focused because of the dual uh, lover, 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 lover rulership. But apparently it's just a passing mention. Uh, but so they drill down, however, on social interaction. And the pitfalls of as much. See, that wasn't something on my radar. Uh, so I was definitely surprised by those inclusions. Uh, but I'd argue it makes sense. You have to insist of others and yourself privacy and seclusion on account of your extreme social magnetism. And perhaps it was as much as a, a surprise for you as it was to me. And or it makes a lot of sense to you. Hopefully, it was a surprise so that you can be like, oh, geez, maybe I need that in my life. I hadn't considered that. Maybe I do have certain issues that crop up because of all of this stuff coming in at me all the time. Ooh, hopefully that's the case. It's nice to learn things and find solutions to problems. Maybe we didn't even know that we have. Uh, in any event, that's been your numbers and your planets and my little uh, contribution to as much. Let's dive in with your tarot. That's right. One of the more eclectic of the metaphysical uh, New Age ideologies, but hey, it's here in the book. We don't have to necessarily take it home with us and start practicing all of it. But let's see what it has to say. Broaden our horizons, all right? The sixth card of the major arcana is the lovers, all right? Symbolizing the love that unites all of humanity through integration of masculine and feminine polarities. And on the good side of this card indicates affections and desires on a high moral, aesthetic, and physical plane. And on the bad side, it suggests a propensity for unfulfilled desires, sentimentality, and indecisiveness. All right. Hey, you need to be making decisions. That's right. Make a decision. All right. What I have to say about your tarot? All right. The lover's card. All right. Naturally, right? Uh, affections and desires of a high moral okay not debauchery okay no debauch no debauchery now all right uh, or at least keep it modest and measured all right that's that's my advice all right get consent as well naturally uh let's see what else do i say you you're here to unite humanity through the balance of polarities the tarot card said not unbalance all right despite that mr and mrs saturday night energy but yeah avoid the negative unfulfilled desires um, thing you don't want to you want to be part of that your powers probably don't work on everyone either so no tantrums if you if you can help it all right <laughs> it lets a really bad look that's right your powers can't necessarily work on everybody so don't be throwing no tantrums all right okay hey, that's been your tarot let's move on to your health oh your health all right those born on October 6th must be aware of all forms of excess. Although having fun can have a positive effect on their psyche, they tend to go overboard by binging and generally neglecting their physical health. 
In being attracted to thrills and danger, they may be like the proverbial moth that seeks out the candle's flame. Also because of their carefree attitude, they can lack the inner reserves to meet tragedy when it arises in their lives or gives, or, or to give much needed compassion and sympathy to others at a deep level. Oh, all right. I didn't really hear much health in there, but uh, I guess the psyche is a big part of health too. Um, they missed a few opportunities with the, uh, every other Libra seems to get a, uh, the stay away from your vices, your, your nicotine, your uh, alcohol, your sugar, uh, your stimulants in general, and they also uh, warn of taking care of your kidneys and your intestines. They kind of broke that through line yesterday, and uh, today they kept up with it apparently. But that doesn't mean it's not still something to be concerned with, because that was included in the Libra breakdown. But here, they want to focus on your psyche. So let's see what else I had to say here. Beware of all excess, all right? Who would have guessed? That's right. If you're the natural life of the party. Uh, it also warns or speaks to lacking a certain amount of depth when it comes to serious life matters. So I reckon finding a way to reconcile that would be a worthwhile effort. Now, how you do that, I, I couldn't tell you. But if you can make a living without a job in public service, uh, you know, finding depth for serious matters should be easy. That's right, especially in this complicated job market, right? I was going to say, they said you don't like a, uh occupation of... Um, you know, peasant work or whatever it was. I was like, well, what kind of job are they getting so that they can get out of their yeah, their house every night and go live that Mr. and Mrs. Saturday Night lifestyle? They gotta be making money somehow. How did they do it? Maybe I thought I'd mention that. So if that's been your health, let's dive in with some advice. All right, you have to recognize and come to know your dark side also. So don't be afraid to grieve if you feel the need to. Endless optimism can be a downer downright depressing. Don't overlook the minutia of daily existence. They are important too. That's right. You know, daily numbers. Get out there and keep your eye out for the minutia. All right, that's been your advice real quick, fast, in and out. So let me get in with the notes here. That's right. What do I have to say about your advice? Things moving all over the place over here. Your advice, a focus on depth and the pitfalls of all you can eat optimism all right i don't know how it's depressing or necessarily a downer uh but i could see how uh, it might rub f folks the wrong way if you drill down on it too much or present it very inopportune times say a funeral you're trying to be the life of the party right that's not helpful all right i wouldn't think or just get a little old hat eventually uh what else we got here uh, it could be, get a little boring, if you like, especially for you, it sounded like. Uh, let's see, what, or you don't like more aptly. <laughs> All right, so yeah, endure some actually boring stuff, too. Uh, join us peasants once in a while, down tilling the earth, if you like. Uh, see what it's like. All right, and experience the gamut. That's, that's also important. If you're just only out there experiencing the parties and the high life, you're missing out on other things, too. I would argue. All right. So that's your advice. Let's dive in with your meditation. Take the energy down just a hair. All right. Are you ready? In order to taste fully the joys of life, one must have suffered as well. Oh, I think we kind of got into that, didn't we? Right, one more time here. In order to taste fully the joys of life, one must have suffered as well. All right, that's been your meditation. I'm not going to try to throw a spin on it or break it down for you. It's your birthday. That's just for you. All right, since our meditation's in the can, let's move on to your strengths and your weaknesses. That's right. Your strengths, you're optimistic, you're adventurous, and you're vivacious. Ooh, that's a good one. That's a good word. And your weaknesses, though, what do we got? What are we in for? Your weaknesses, you're self-absorbed. And you're sensationalist. Oh, that's a negative, I guess. And you only got two. Usually it's three. So, hey, here we go. Less to work on. All right, those have been your strengths and weaknesses. Let's move on to those born on this day. All right, and as we move on to those born on this day, not only we see who shares your company. I like to take this as a moment to examine something I think is important. All right, and that's finding your passions in this life. 
Now, you may already know what those are, from the sounds of it you do, but maybe there's something else you can throw on it, like a, a tertiary kind of thing, and that's number three if you didn't know, because maybe your second passion is directly correlated with the first one, that's right. But I say that because I get out in the world and I meet folks and I ask them what they do, and more importantly, if they like it, and usually they don't. Now, why is that? Well, very simple. Like, you know, you get out of school, you got to get into a job, and there's just no time to put in the work to figure out what we like and what we want to do. For real, the thing that we're going to get joy enjoyment out of. Uh, so I figure this is the perfect opportunity to see not only who else was born on this day, but what they did to not, get, not only get in the book, but kind of put their stamp on the cultural zeitgeist, if you like. So let's dive in with those born on this day and see if we can't take some inspiration if we're looking to uh, find some of our own passions, assuming you haven't already. All right, let's dive in with those born on this day. We got, ooh, I don't know how to pronounce this one, so I'm going to give it a shot here. Le Corbusier, or Corbuser, a Swiss master architect, painter, and a writer. We have George Westinghouse, the engineer manufacturer of the Westinghouse Corporation, who's also the founder of that. We have Florence B. Siebert, who was a biochemist and tuberculosis test inventor. All right. Uh, we have Robert Mann, two N's, uh, director of the Harvard MIT Rehabilitative Engineering Center, also biomedical professor, inventor, synovial joint biomechanics in missile research. Interesting. Went from uh, medicine over into engineering. We also have Jenny Lind, a 19th century soprano, the Swedish Nightingale, it says, and sensational American tour promoted by P.T. Barnum. We also have Helen Willis Moody, a tennis player, an eight-time Wimbledon, seven-time U.S., and a four-time French Open winner. We have Havetz uh, Al-Assad, a Syrian president. Uh, Thor Heyerdahl, a Norwegian adventurer, and he sailed a raft across the Pacific and Atlantic. Also a writer of Contiki. We have Carol Lombard, a film actress, and married Clark Gable, and it says died in a plane crash at age 33. That's unfortunate. Uh, we have Edwin, Edwin rather, Fisher, a German pianist, Paul Badura, <laughs> Badura, Sakoda, <laughs> supposing, an Austrian painter, an Austrian name, that's probably, couldn't, couldn't pronounce it. Edgar Young, travel writer. Klaus Debussy, uh, Dibiasi, perhaps, Italian gold medal winning platform diver in three consecutive Olympics. Janet Gaynor, a film actress. Britt Eklund, a Swedish film actress. Uh, Luis Felipe, a French king. Philippe, perhaps. Boy, the names today get me. Edward V, uh, British 16th century king. Richard Dyer Bennett, the British folk singer, troubadour, guitarist, lutenist, it says, and a songwriter. Uh, Charles Lapiquet, <laughs> the French names got me again. French painter, uh, optical scientist as well. That's interesting. Uh, John Key, uh, Caius College, Cambridge founder. The names today. We butchered a lot of names, so let's make up for it. It's not done in malice. I just am ignorant to being able to pronounce certain names and words for that matter. But with all that being said, that's been those born on this day. Hopefully you took some inspiration. I know you might not have. It's just a quick little snapshot of people's lives. And maybe it wasn't even their passion. But hey, you know what? You got actors. You got people who were engineers, but they also dabbled in the bio, uh, biomedical field. So hey. You, you may be Mr. or Mrs. Saturday night, but you can do other things too. That's right. So figure out your passions. All right. And that has basically rounded out your birthday reading, except to say your season is fall. Your sign once again is Libra of the Libra 2 period specifically. And your quality and element is Cardinal Air. And this has been October 6th. The Day of the Good Life, from the Secret Language of Birthdays by Gary Goldschneider and Hugh Stelfers. I have a link for this book down in the description if you want to pick up your own copy. Uh, it makes a great icebreaker. You missed a miss a Saturday night. I know you can carry the party on your shoulders without any assistance. But if you need a nice assist, this thing's going to get it done for you. You put it out there on the coffee table. You might just use it to crack open some walnuts if you get the hardcover. But hey, it's going to be helpful in that regard too. Because you know you can't be a wasting your time doing that. Even though you probably have an inventive, entertaining way for doing that otherwise. 
In any event, hey, that's not what's important here. What's important here is it's your birthday. And so I just want to once again say happy birthday. And for everyone else who joined us, hey, hope you enjoyed yourself. And uh, you join us for your birthday reading. That's right. Now, uh, lest we forget, once again, your daily numbers. Get out there. Let the universe show you. It's with you on your path. And uh, all that being said, once again, happy birthday. Take care of yourselves.